I'm good. How's that COVID? Are you good? I'm cool. I'm cool yourself. You look good. Thank you. You look amazing yourself. I thought you were going to come in like your bright colors and stuff. Is it like a themed thing or what? Because I see your Instagram. You'd be like, I'm like, I'm watching Mr. GQ here and swag. I mean, you swag now, but is, is are you wearing black because you're scared? Oh, why, no, why, why, why I, mean, the I, I, I want to be very subtle today, you know, because, why? you know, just, you know, just chilling. You know? But I mean, you chose the wrong day to be subtle. Why are you just giving me my shirt? Yeah, yeah, just give me your shirt. Look at your outfit, though. It's, it's this is me subtle. I was going for church call. It's really cool. I like it a lot. Who was going for the pasta? <laughs> I really like it a lot. I think you should is make it? one. Yeah, it's really amazing. Again, yeah. I'm going to make you one. Yes, for okay. sure. Yeah, I'd love one. You know, I think a lot, a lot of people actually don't know how serious I'm about fashion. Like, I don't say it, I just wear the clothes. It shows, though. Yeah, but I'm really like, listen, like, if you speak, like, a lot of the time I don't work with stylists. So I invest, I have, like, a, a personal tailor that has been... I've met that, you remember that time you were still buying the trench coats for me for rent? Yes. And you, you take me to the, by Ellis Park? Yes, correct. He's, but no, he's, he's you know, he's, no, he's, he's moved. Oh. You know, he's, he's now in, in Hatton because life is good. Hey, <laughs> but, yeah, all in. But, but like, uh, fashion for me is just close to a religion, man. Like, it's something that I hold very dear to my heart. And a lot of people don't know that. Like, they, I wear the clothes, yes. Because but a lot, of thoughts, about, a lot of thoughts go behind show. it. They do show. It could be just people picking clothes for me. Actually, no. I, I, you know, I actually just go... picking clothes and the stuff you wear is not just Yes, there. but w what I'm trying to get across is that actually there's a lot of thinking that goes behind the outfit. So, like, even if I have a stylist that I work with, um, I'll actually brief them and show them, uh, uh, like give them a mood board and this is how we're going and make sure the tailor get the cuts right mm -hmm. and the design right and everything. And something I take very, very dearly, you know, mm -hmm. close to my heart, as, as you do. We're in Baseline right now and I mean, I want to find out, have you ever been here? Yes, uh, in fact, I think we've been here together quite a few times. <laughs> it's always kind of, ooh. Uh, I think uh, that time when I moved to Joburg and we uh, lived in Mabonang and stuff. Snap. I think, yeah, we, we used to come here for some reggae nights and, and some shows. Like, we've been here a few times. Have you tasted your drink? I haven't yet. I'd love to have a sip. Do you know Can I? who it's made after? N no. It's made after you. It's actually a drink um, made in your personality. It's oh. called the conversational piece. Oh, wow. Well, Bert is really good and uh, very rebellious. And mm. basically the whole thing like, represents Trevor and all his struggles, his growth in Africa, um, how he has done this sophisticatedly, um, and the personality is bubbly like him, but also shows his abilities and strength. Thank you. And the most amazing thing is that really knowing you from back in the day with the open mics and you being this person who's just like winning all the time. I mean, what kept you going? Uh, thank you. I mean, it's, it's been such a beautiful journey, really. And the fact that we're all sitting here talking about this is even a much beautiful view that we could ever, uh, could ever imagine. Mm. You know, I come from a very crazy place, you know, um, where a lot of great things don't really happen to people or young people like me. So, so that all really has kept me going, just trying to change that narrative. Mm -hmm. uh, and also just trying to spark a beautiful dream into a lot of refugees um, and just kids that come from places that we call the forgotten cities, you know. Um, and yeah, I, literally I had nothing to lose. I just put my, my whole life yeah. and everything behind everything. And um, I've been on my journey and I work 24-7, 365 days a year, you know, um, <laughs> always pushing day and night. And um, yeah. I'm grateful for the journey that I've traveled. Just to play a game, right? All right. Are you done with the game? Yeah, I'm done. I'm cool. Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to shuffle. Yeah. And then you're going to choose a card. And then once you've chosen the card, you can read or whatever it makes you feel like. If it's a question or whatever, if it's a picture, you'll tell me what it makes you feel like. Ne? Okay, cool. Okay, cool. So, choose a card. Okay. Let me think about it. I want the this one. This is like luck. This is like the scratch card. Okay. <laughs> and tell me if you have anything. Wow. This is crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you said reveal how you did it. Yes, give us the secrets, the recipe. 
You also want to be buying cars every week. Ah, uh, wow. Well. <laughs> If I have to be honest with you, it's just really been, I have a very resilient spirit. It's unshakable, it's unbreakable. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I don't, I don't see limit really. Like there's not many, I don't, I don't face a lot of no's or failures on the way. Just, they don't really stop me, you know? Um, and that's my character and with everything that I do, like I don't see obstacles as obstacles. I see them as opportunities to be able to shape things, you know? So um, I use the same view on life in my music career, everyday life, and I take a lot of risks and enjoy it. You know, I live on the edge in <laughs> everything, you know? I live on the edge, like yeah. proper, you know? Um, and I think that has really um, Given, given me room to always push myself. And just to say, reveal how you did it, it's such a broader question, you know, but like my whole journey, I think with music and, and entrepreneurship has really been built around that, kind, that spirit, you know? And um, of course, you know, you know the story from Durban, from working on the streets and doing all bunch of odd jobs, be it car guard, be it gardener, be, yeah. be it a waiter, well, all bunch of things. And the vision always been intact right from the start. I knew exactly where I wanted to go. Mm -hmm. I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Although many people around me did not believe it, mm -hmm. my vision has always been clear. It hasn't changed. In fact, I believe I'm still right to the start of it, you know? So I just like, as I said, like, it just that's pretty much it. Like every single day, and I, I do not lie, every single day I wake up and I do something about my vision every single day. Whether I'm sick, whether I'm feeling down, whether I'm sad or I'm happy, mm -hmm. every single day I do something about my dream. Every single day. Yeah, that is crazy. And then you have to keep yourself motivated, Val. Well, because, I mean, it is your dream. For sure. At the same time, you know, when a dream is bigger than who you are, because at the end of the day, I come from, uh, as I said, the city where I come from or the community I come from or my mm -hmm. family. A lot of great things don't happen for us or to us, you know? So it's, the stories here, as recently you heard about the volcano eruption that happened in my hometown. Mm -hmm. uh, then you hear a lot of wars. It's always been, since we're young, it's always been like war, armed conflict, childhood friends going to be soldiers. It's always been like the crazy stuff, right? Yeah. When I was very young, about 17, 18, I told myself, there gotta be somebody, gonna be a young guy that's gonna leave city and go make a living somewhere and be able to change that narrative. So every time someone pronounces or say the name of the city, or in fact, the country Congo, they gotta be an incredible story that has been told as well, you know, um, be it for music or be it for a young bu businessman, whatever. And that word, word really pushes me, you know, uh, being able to really shift the narrative and create a whole beautiful new narrative for, in music and just like a young African, Giant pushing for their dreams, yeah. And winning. <laughs> yes, all the time. Hey. Although it's still right early, but it's been really a blessing, you know, like, you know, I wouldn't call it luck, luck because it's, it's, you know, it, the harder you work, the luckier you get. Yes, right? You know, yes, but it's, it's been such a beautiful there. journey, yeah. yeah. Cheers to change. Cheers. Bluetooth. Cheers, another one. Let's see if your tricks work. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Why are you messing my card, oh, boo? <laughs> I want this card. Is it? Yes. Why do you say no to things? Yo. Things is too broad, but I say a lot of time if I say no to things, I just genuinely either don't connect to it or genuinely doesn't align with my thoughts or where yeah. I am and my values, whatever, yeah. I mean, do you ever find yourself though not saying no, without, like if you feel like you've found yourself saying yes? Yes, I have, but again, you know, I think over time as I grow slightly older, I'm finding a lot of comfort in saying no. And standing if by If something it. doesn't really, you know, it doesn't, doesn't resonate like, yeah, it doesn't resonate or doesn't really sit well with me. I'm, I'm cool saying no and not, and not being anxious on how, people will feel, you know. I'm yeah. cool in my space, I'm cool with who I am. I need to find a card that actually challenges you. Like, like this is very problematic because <laughs> find something again. Okay, I'm, I'm, this time I'm just gonna pick anything. <laughs> 
What, what a, char a charade. Charades, charades. So if you're charades, it's like you do the action of what Trezor is. You're a pouncing cat. No. What does... Then it... Uh, More. <laughs> you're, like, no, you're making like a puma. Correct. <laughs> you're making like a puma, there's no sound. Okay, so you're like a silent cat. I mean, you are actually. Silence mover. Yes, you are. Um... Global and humble. Rainbow. Bigger things on the low, low. Yeah, on the deal. Yes. <laughs> Got it. Oh my God, Jezo. Okay, we have to do it again. But what makes you do that though? What makes you like keep it on the deal? It gives me peace. Yeah? Yeah. Because I think I control what people need to know. Uh, you think what you do? No, I do. I do because I, I can control my own narrative because I think that's beautiful. Like owning your story is very important. You know, controlling how you tell the story is very crucial. We have all oh, we have such colorful stories and journeys, you know. Mm -hmm. I just don't ever like my story to be fluid. It's like for anybody to just shape it, you know. So I take the director seat on it and shape it how I feel, you know, and mm -hmm. I tell it in a glorious way. And one of them is just share what I believe is crucial to share. <laughs> okay. 40, 47. Mm -hmm. Does it evoke anything? What does it make you think of? First, seven is one of my favorite, not one, it's like possibly my favorite number next to three. Why? I just, seven represents a lot. So I'm from a family of seven, mm -hmm. I'm the third born, but also it's my, the, title, oh. the title of my first album, Seven. Have you, have you checked it out in numerology? Yeah, of course I have. And it still makes sense to... A lot. It's the reason why I actually named my first album Seven, because it actually spoke about the messaging of the project, which was the right timing and being ready mm -hmm. to start your journey and being ready for the world. And it was like the perfect timing for it, you know. So 47, I want, I want to understand how can we decode it. I mean, what does it make you think of? I mean, they think of family, your siblings. Yeah. And where are your siblings? Are they all in Congo? They're all in Congo. My love and miss very much. Also, I, I remember very, very clearly when I was young. I think this might have been the age where my late dad and I were very close. Mm -hmm. Very, very close. It was like between 45 and 47. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I remember. But which was, of course, I had some of the fondest memories of him. So. Yeah, what happened? What happened to him? My dad, of course, I lost both my parents very young. Mm -hmm. My dad was a businessman, so music was not anything that was really, you know. Seriously. Yeah, but he, he, he watched me perform. I don't remember how old he was at that time. He watched me perform for the first, <laughs> first time, and his comments were like, oh, son, I love your music, but please uh, don't, don't shake your waist too much, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know? And that, yeah. that all he did, they commented, but it uh, was a good man, you yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And then, um, and your mom, did she ever get to see you? Yeah, yeah. My, my mom was, was she, has a, she had a beautiful voice. Uh, sometimes think that's where my falsetto range comes from. Mm. But I gotta tell you this funny story, right? Yeah. So, I'm in Durban. We're still doing the open marks. I had this, um, uh, this, <laughs> <laughs> I had this Durban band called Maisha, right? I remember Maisha. Yeah, I mean, we're doing open marks together. We're doing a whole bunch. Splash a fan, of, you know. <laughs> for a lot of people that don't know, I've not moved out for like ten, over ten years, it's and been we literally started our career together, like in Durban. Actually, even when we did the train festival, yes. I was pregnant oh. with my daughter, who's turning thirteen in August. So it's been over ten oh years. Oh my god! She's that's turning thirteen in August. So I was giving birth two weeks after that. That's concert. crazy. So yeah, it's been. I remember the train festival. Over the, it's been about thirteen years now. You know, uh, was was so crazy, and um, I just literally arrived. I think at that time. Uh, literally, what we met, I probably have like a few months old in South Africa, and yeah. I was still trying to learn how to articulate myself. And anyway, so the band, my band used to perform in this neighborhood called 
Westville in a small pub. In Pine Town. Yeah, yeah. Woodcut, woodcutters yeah. somewhere, you know. <laughs> so uh, my friends, a lot of my friends were cuggers outside mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll perform there at woodcutters like on weekends and get like 1,500 for like a two-hour set. Mm -hmm. And I remember this one time I was doing, I can't remember what it was, but it was some, was I don't know, it was an alternative cover. I don't know if it was Pearl Jam or was, was uh, Incubus. It was an alternative band, right? Yeah. And I went on this crazy drive and I started singing falsetto. And this guy that was really crazily drunk came in like, I was like, oh my God, are you really hitting that high note? Are you wearing a G-string or what? <laughs> I don't what? know. Because they sang the notes were very high, which was really It was funny. like you were in pain from your butt. <laughs> 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 oh my God! That yeah, is but it was, it was such a beautiful. That was um, compliment. That was, but it was such a beautiful, I think, journey, like um, in, in Durban, and beautiful start, beautiful, beautiful place to start, and it really has been beautiful also to watch you evolve into this incredible, amazing woman you become, you know, in your craft and just mm -hmm. as a human being. It really has been incredible. That's true. Yeah. And so, like, I mean, how did you even get to? Work with Maisha. Crazy story. I arrived in Durban. Mm -hmm. No papers, illegally. I spent like months, um, like the first month at Home Affairs in Durban. Mm -hmm. Eventually, I get my refugee paper, so I start working as a security guard. You know, I'm earning at that time like about just under two and a half thousand rand a month for 30 days work. Mm -hmm. I get my first paycheck, what do I do? I go on the internet and spend like eighty percent of it because my rent was like two hundred rand because I was sleeping <laughs> with like ten people. Okay. And I didn't want to, like, I didn't. I just wanted to work for my dream. So, and I have this small blue book and I put like a thousand numbers in it. I go online. I didn't know the difference between a record label, or publishing, and studio. I just everybody that said music mm -hmm. recording, I just put the numbers down. And I come from my shift. I go would work like around four p.m. I come back the next day at six, mm. and then I wait around seven, eight, and I just call every number you can think of, <laughs> right? So I'll call, geez, and most of the people will just cut the call because they couldn't really understand what I was talking about. I, I used to say, <laughs> hi, music, artists want to record. A lot of the guys wouldn't really understand. And Rod was one of the most special ones. Rod is like, was my, became my manager at that time, and. I remember him like being very passionate and be like, okay, cool, what are you looking for? Eventually we met this uh, shopping mall in Durban, Copa Pavilion. Mm -hmm. And I bought along my little guitar that I bought for like 300 bucks from my <laughs> salary, you know? And um, we at this restaurant and I started playing some music for him. And then all the old people that was around just came like closer and just performed for like an hour for free for this guy's an audition. And, and then that's how the band came to life, you know? And uh, it was such a beautiful thing because within two months we were opening at that time for Freshly Ground and Eddie Ground and Ladies Me Black. Literally mm -hmm. happened so fast, but it just really something that opened very organically. But the funny part is like all the guys that I used to call, like a lot of the damn, a lot of the guys still like work for the record labels, yeah. the companies. So now we laugh because we sit maybe on the same board, you know, <laughs> discussing the industry. We laugh about it, but I just like remind them of like. You know, they saw so how it really long it took me for me to actually sit in the same room. But it was such a beautiful process and I'm really grateful. I wouldn't change it for anything. Yeah. Okay, let's go. I hope this is tough. Yes. All right. And... Oh. Um, Handcuffs. Mm. You know, I've, I've been pretty, uh, most of my life I've been good. I've never been in handcuffs. Uh, handcuffs are not just for bad. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know, but I, I know. I, I don't think I want to discuss that here, okay? I don't want to discuss right, that here, but, but... I didn't say anything. But, you know, like, I've, just, I've only had, like, handcuffs on me, like, when I was hijacked, like, last year. They even had handcuffs? They had, like, handcuffs and cable ties or whatever, you know, so... Tell me about that. It was crazy. I was coming from actually from studio recording for Nati in Nival. Mm -hmm. I went to my house and I was doing a, a song campaign for some brand and I was dropping my engineer off 
at his place. Mm -hmm. And I was just playing this song loud and then I parked in front of this uh, uh, garage. And actually I haven't, I haven't even spoken about this to anybody I think in the media before. Mm -hmm. um, and there's this like four or six guys just pull up with like AK-47 and guns and just like it got so crazy. Before I knew it, I, like, I was in the back seat, like shot in the back seat. Then we started fight fighting, arguing, and then next thing they stopped somewhere and just like shot me in the boots for like eight hours. You know, ended up in the back room somewhere in Soero. And then du I think Dube Hostel. Yes. And you know, they emptied my, my cards at that time. It was just a crazy thing, you know. And then around 4, 4 a.m. Um, dropped us in, in the hostel nearby. And yeah, trying to find the nearest police station. 8 p.m. the day before my life was great. You know, I was just yes. like living my life. I was like, good. It's Next, 4, 4 a.m. I was like literally in the middle of nowhere, no shoes, try, you know, with my hand tied, trying to find my way around so it all and eventually found a police station which dropped me at my house and it was really a horrible experience. But I'm cool, I'm cool now. Like I got over it literally within the first few days, yeah. I mean, did you get any um, therapy? I did, I did go for a session. A session? Yeah, but also, I'll be honest with you. I think because of the things I've seen growing up, okay. you know, I built very thick skin for things. So, so this guy, which is a very funny story. So these guys will, were playing some um, a piano song, like very loud. So I'm in the booth and I'm, now that they're using a car that they hijacked and it has crazy loudspeaker, right? Mm -hmm. And then they heard me laughing because they were playing a song and then they were singing about it, you know? They were, they were singing to it. Yeah. And they're like, hey, why are you laughing? You're supposed to be sad. I'm like, throughout the whole journey at that time, I think already in my head, I'm like, you know, I'm cool. Whatever happens, happens. I'm not gonna panic. Of course, I went through a lot of the emotions in the first hour. Yeah. And then eventually I collected myself and just went through the whole thing and cooperated. And the craziest part is that the next day, they used the car they hijacked and the guy didn't survive, you know. The next day, not with us, someone else. But I'm grateful, man. Yeah, that's the only time I've been in handcuffs in my life. And so now you're not paranoid? Or are you like, do you think you're more vigilant? I'm always vigilant. When you're driving? I'm always vigilant driving, you know, like I'm... I'm a bit of. Isn't that like the an adopt the, a new paranoia that's just attached to that? It does just because it I don't want nobody to come close to my window, you know, because it happened. But I, I've, you know, I, ch I should not live in fear, though. Like, yeah, because already it's, like, that's also know, a paralysis. You know, I should not live in fear, but so I'm, I'm aware. I'm much more aware of my surroundings, but I'm, I'm, like. I'm cool. I think the first, the first two days after it, it just like. The adrenaline that when it comes down just crashes but and then you start hear more people that happen to but you know, yeah, like I you know. survived. Yeah. yeah I actually got out alive. Yeah it was it was crazy. Awesome. Uh, ooh. Twenty one. Twenty one. 21, so mm -hmm. many things. Turn 21 in South Africa. You turned 21 here? Yeah. Great. And how was that? What did you get up to? What did you do? Uh, my new friends from the band organized okay. a party um, in Durban. Mm -hmm. I think at that time, I just had like a self-realization or self-revelation of as a young artist, like where and how I wanna, where I wanna go. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm always, I was always in the age. Uh, it was just a year, I think, where I got to really embrace like the magnitude of my journey at 21. Okay. Yeah. So almost like when they give you like the key for, oh, the doors are open, it's like I, it opens I had no door. damn key. No, <laughs> I, I mean, not, I know, I know, I understand, yeah, for sure. Like, <laughs> but I, I didn't get no key. Yeah. No, no, nobody even remembered my birthday because I had a baby. So this is like, oh, it's fine. That's why I think I partied for the next 10 years in my life. Are you a kid mother, though, when I met you? Who, me? Yes. Oh, thank you. I mean, yeah. now that's why I only worry about money now, because family's check. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was such a great, I think it was a great phase um, in Durban. Yeah. And that city holds a lot of great memories for, like, just the shaping of the musician that I am today. Just, And also just as a human, you know, it really... This, I think this particular age, like a lot of things 
became clear for me at that time. Because if I'm not mistaken, I started planning to like record my first EP, which uh, mm -hmm. the budget at that time was 700 rand. It's fair. <laughs> <laughs> I recorded my first EP one take. You know, um, I mean, with 700 rands, what you gonna do, especially when you've had nothing? 700 rands becomes a lot, yes. It's just like, um, and that was the budget for my first EP, and and a lot of the things happen around this age. I still haven't made you panic, I mean, but you don't, so naturally, it's, uh, it, it'll be very hard to make me panic, but I know, I'm not let's, even trying let's try. to. You're just like, you can handle all the let's punches. try. A, yes. South Africans must stop. Look, um, of course, I don't want to generalize or be political or anything, but I think um, it get a bit sad sometimes, you know. I think especially for me, it's, it's because this uh, question is a very sensitive one, but I think with the xenophobia stuff, you know, it get a bit mm -hmm. sad sometimes because I consider this place a home for me, you know. Uh, I've made it a home and I build my, my business and things around people here and the support, you know, and it's always for me a sad thing to see things like foreigners must go or there's always, I've never been affected directly, yeah. but psychologically it does all the time, you know. Um, and I think it's, it's a, just a self awakening thing, you know, and you know, and I have so much love for this place and the people mm -hmm. and I think it's all, it's time to have that kind of conversation where there's deeper socioeconomic issues and running and picking on the next man, especially who's possibly ha has really nothing to do with the bigger picture of things, mm -hmm. is not really gonna give a solution. On a lot of things, you know, lots you of know, things. The crazy thing is that I remember when I was going to, um, where did I get malaria? In, in, did well, I get it? In Malawi. Malawi, yes. yes. So when I was going to Malawi, I remember we made a stop because you go to the airport and then you have this other six hour drive to the place. Yes. And so while we were driving, I remember the moment people heard I was South African, they'd just be like, ah, xenophobia. I'm just like, no, 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 I'm not. I'll show you the video I just posted right now. I'm, I wouldn't be here if I was xenophobic. And I'm not, a, not all of us are that, but it just shows you outside. Yes. Even outside because their brothers and their siblings here in South Africa are treated the same way, a certain way. Therefore, when you get there, it's just like, when you hear South Africa, you're just like, mm -mm. And, and I strongly believe But it's like, still not violent. Yeah, and I strongly believe like, it's, it's, it's not the majority of the people, you know. It's, yeah. you know, like, cause, I mean, I wouldn't be where I am at if, if it was you, you know, it, you know, I, my my whole life has changed because of the people of this beautiful country, and I'm I'm forever grateful for as long as I'm always gonna, you know, be traveling this journey. Yes. And you know, and this message comes from a place of love, and you know, because I love our people, mm -hmm. and I believe they just need some enlightenment of mind, you know, to just yes. a working of mind. Yeah. Yes. Although I must say. You know, uh, that's one thing. And um, <laughs> one thing South African mustn't stop, shouldn't stop, is the humor. People here are hilarious. So we're gonna play the last one. Right. This one has different rules. So you have to choose three cards, then I'll tell you what's next. Three cards? Three cards. One. Mm -hmm. Okay, two uh -huh. and three. Okay, so what, what, what do I do? Oh so my now, God. Out of those three, yeah. choose the one you really don't want to answer, the one that touches you too much. Just, you can delete that one. And then the other two you can answer. It head. You're dropping mine. <laughs> awesome, so drop those. Okay, so what am I? Drop both of those. This is the one you actually. No, I need. Mean, I... Sorry, it's my rules. You're a visitor. Drop those cards and deal with this card. How, how am I going to do that? It's a surprise. Surprise. OK. <laughs> that's fine. I don't know even know how to do it. OK, cool. So then tell me when you see the ish. So like, you know, in our, in our industry, you, you meet some really good people. And you meet some people that dress in good people. Outfits, yes. You know? And then I think that's, that's represented, you know? Like, right. <laughs> uh, um, you, you meet people that have great intentions and people that have horrible intentions. And when you're naive, 
you get taken advantage of, mm -hmm. you know, and being the person that I am, I really don't take that like it. Yeah, like so. And um, yeah, I think as a young artist, I got taken for a ride quite a lot in the city. And uh, this is what really made me think of the people. And I stay very far <laughs> away yeah, of people. It you know, I, I, you know, the funny part is like, I, for a lot of people that don't know, I've been handling my business in, ho in house for the last years, almost five years on my own. I remember the first time you were literally fighting for everything that you deserved. The first time you got here, while we were still eating um, tin fish. <laughs> But you were still getting the deals on stuff. I'm getting my money. I have to. Like, you know, the fact that you're picking up on that, I remember when we, I moved here, I stayed in Mabunang. Mm. I think Munch, you and I became even much closer friends because I couldn't even, we couldn't afford food. Yeah. I couldn't afford 50 bucks electricity in Mabunang. So we are, we're going to put some, a little bit of money together, get some tin fish, get some <laughs> beans and pop and, 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 and eat and, and chill out for, and, and, and go party and chill out for like a week and relax. I'm, like, you know. I'm a DJ now, okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you know, a lot of the time it was just, you know, it just, the, our, our industry, rather our business is for quite well, a lot of people that, you know, um, could be vouchers, especially if you're very naive, you know, and I've learned you know, from being mm -hmm. burnt. And now I just handle a lot of the things and that's, I think the, the most I can think about is, you know. But all love. Always. All love. That's no, how you grow. No fire, all love. Let's let's go, because you're still going to grow. <laughs> all the time. Nice. So, thank you so much. That's so awesome. Thank you. And I know you're going to take me to the strip club after this. Uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm going home after this. <laughs> Ooh.